one thing uh, okay one thing before we proceed i request you to participate during the lectures because uh, i gave the feedback that participation is not uh, enough in the lectures there are only six or seven students who participate so I would request you all to participate and ask doubts if you have any. Most of the students never ask doubts. So that's, that's something we can work on. <laughs> all right, I'm sharing my screen. Are you able to hear me fine? My voice is a little uh, different because of, I had cold and I have some, I have sore throat, I think. So are you able to hear me just fine? Okay. <clears throat> cool. Uh, so today we are going to talk about, yes, good evening, Nihal. Today we are going to talk about OAuth, right? So, Let me open up the diagram. So till now we have achieved uh, this thing that uh, first user registers, then user logs in, server will send the secret token, client will store that secret token in cookies or local storage. And now client is supposed to send this token in the header, right? as authorization header uh, for all the authenticated requests. For all the requests where we have defined uh, this middleware, auth middleware. If this header is uh, present, auth header is present, which has the secret token, then only uh, this middleware will allow the request to pass to the request handler. Okay, this is what we talked about. Now, <clears throat> there is still one thing that we can improve, is which is that user has to uh, register on our application and they have to log in with the email and password, right? So, <clears throat> you may have seen uh, in some of the applications, we uh, sign in using Google, uh, account, Google account, GitHub account, Microsoft account all these things, right? So we don't have to register and we we don't log in with email password, rather we log in with our existing uh, accounts on the, which are sort of uh, popular identity providers, right? So those identity providers, they can be, so I'm adding over there. Sign in with Google. Facebook. GitHub. Right, etc. Twitter and so on. <coughs> so what we want to do is we want to add a feature where user does not sign in. Uh, user does not have to register and user does not have to log in. The rest of the flow is going to remain the same, right? So instead of uh, this API, instead of this, we want to uh, also give another option, which is let's say sign in with, uh, which is sign in with, uh, let's say we are going to talk about GitHub. In this tutorial, we will just implement GitHub but uh, google facebook all these are same okay so we are going to say sign in with github and how are we going to do this and then we will uh, have the same uh, <laughs> instead of checking password we will check whether user is signing in with uh, github uh, properly or not and then generate the secret token 
again we will send a secret token here okay again we will uh, respond with the secret token so this uh, is same as login this will replace login this is, this will replace our conventional login with email and password okay so i'm going to open this flow diagram just to show you how it's going to work hold on <coughs> So um, this is taking some time. Okay. Maybe my internet network is a little bit slow. So while this is loading, I'll tell you. First thing that we have to do is we uh, we want to remove register and login. So we will uh, uh, register an application for sign in with GitHub, right? <coughs> so uh, on this is still loading let me reload this So <clears throat> first we will add our application uh, on GitHub sign uh, for GitHub sign in, right? So this is this this is a developer uh, this is a developer option. So we'll go to developer setting and we will register our application for sign in with GitHub. GitHub is going to provide us two things. Uh, OAuth client id and OAuth client secret this is uh, the id for our application on github right so github will need this to identify which app user is trying to sign into okay and this client or uh, auth client secret i will tell you where we will need this right once we do this github will provide us these two things or any auth uh, provider will give us these two things right <coughs> after this what the uh, what what the flow is going to be is uh, uh, on our front end we will show use the button to sign in with github this will take the user to the github login page or permission page if the user is already logged into github if the user is not logged into github github will ask the user to log into github otherwise it will take to to the permission screen that this so and so application wants to use uh, your github account okay do you allow 
right? So it is called consent screen. So if the user gives the permission, then the user is sent back to our application. Is this is are these steps clear? Ask me any doubts if these are not clear. Okay. So we will have to show a user some link to take the user to GitHub. Then you get, uh, user will give us the permission and the user will be sent back to our application. Okay. Uh, so when, when this happens, GitHub will give us a temporary code. Okay. This temporary code is valid for 10 minutes. With this, this is called uh, access code, right? So with this temporary code, we cannot patch user details from GitHub. We have to exchange this access code for access token, right? Which is uh, similar to our token, but <clears throat> used to fetch user details from GitHub. Okay. Once we uh, get the user details from GitHub, uh, also, this is, uh, okay, GitHub, then we can check if the user is already present in our DB or not present, right? Check whether the user is present in our DB or not. If not present, then we will uh, add the user to our DB. Otherwise we will, so the reason I'm writing this down is that we will follow each and every step. And once we follow each and every step, you will get more clarity, okay? So otherwise we will end the user. There is a question by Prabhanshu, how to hack someone's ID and password? Well, Prabhanshu, this is not a class on ethical hacking or anything like that. So please limit your questions to something that we are teaching you. Okay. When I, when I said, please ask your doubts, I did not, <laughs> you can ask anything. We will not change the curriculum just because you are interested in knowing something. So please try to understand what we are teaching you first. Most of the things can wait, right? I hope uh, you understand the reason why I'm saying this. No offense. Okay. <clears throat> try to follow these. Uh, what are these steps? and because we are going to need to implement all of, uh, follow all these steps to implement what, okay? And these are the steps that are mentioned in this diagram as well. First, uh, the first step that happens is user presses sign in with uh, Google or sign in with GitHub option on our application. The user is sent to the uh, Google's OAuth service or GitHub's OAuth service where the consent screen is shown to the user. And if the user uh, gives consent or gives permission, user, uh, GitHub or Google will redirect the user back to our application. So for redirecting a user back to our application, uh, OAuth provider will need some route. So we will call that route, callback route, okay? Using, so this is important thing, callback route. So <clears throat> this callback route is the only thing 
that will uh, tell uh, Google or GitHub where to redirect the user to. Okay. Once uh, in this callback route, so let's say this callback route is going to be something like HTTP for now, let's say localhost uh, 3000 uh, GitHub sign in. Okay. Or Google sign in. In this, the GitHub or Google will provide us some code, right? Some type of code so that uh, when the user comes to our application, we can use this code to fetch the user identity because user identity, we still don't have user identity. So we need a code. So we will be given some kind of code like this. This is a random uh, number, but this is called access code and it is a it is a temporary code which is valid only for 10 minutes. Now we have to exchange this access code and using both client ID and client secret. Okay. So we use client ID and client secret. So <clears throat> this client secret is uh, is a secret that will that should never be shared with front end right it should always uh, it should always be uh, kept a secret and it should always remain on the back end side that's why this is step this is step right we cannot do this step in the in front end we have to do this step in backend for the reason that we do not share the client secret on front end, right? So <laughs> we will call this, we will call GitHub API to fetch the user details. First, we will exchange this token for an access token, which is sort of uh, a permanent token. And for this, we need OAuth client ID and client secret. Okay. So once we get the user details, this is the last step and then we can create our own jwt token this is equivalent to uh, login api right instead of logging in uh, registering with the email password and logging in with email password instead we say sign in with github where they don't have to sign in our server will automatically handle whether the user is already present in our DB or not present. Uh, if it is not present, if this is the first time signing in with GitHub, that will also add the user to the DB. Okay. So here I have uh, said this, that uh, second step is user will uh, be a user will be redirected to our application with some some type of access code then our front end will call the back end with this access code and this this code is used uh, to get the user details from the oauth provider okay so once we get the details we will uh, feed the details in our database okay and then server will respond with success and maybe we can uh, also send the auth token okay our jwt auth token <coughs> okay so the first thing that we have to do is we have to register our application uh, on github so i'm going to do that now so i'm going to go and say github settings and if you go to uh, apps right So there is this, there is these settings and there is this developer setting option. At the end, there is this developer settings option. Inside this, we have three of three settings. Go to OAuth apps, okay? So right now I have you know, added three applications. So you will not see any application here if you do this. Also, the step that we are doing, it is completely free so that you can also try it. Okay, that uh, this also this message is also helpful saying these applications you have registered 
to use the GitHub APIs. So you will click on this new OAuth app button. So you can call this PT Web 8B homepage URL. You can add anything, does not matter. What is important is the callback URL. Inside the callback URL, uh, you have to give uh, this URL which for which the user will be redirected to your application. Okay. <clears throat> that means your code will uh, proceed after this. User will land on your website. Okay. Once we do this, we get the client ID, right? So I'm, I'm noting down the client ID. Once we register our application here, we get the client ID. So this is what I told you. Our client ID is this one. And our, we also need a client secret to communicate with the GitHub API securely. Otherwise, uh, GitHub will not allow communicating with GitHub APIs. Okay. So to get a client secret, we need to click on this button. And I'm going to use GitHub mobile to authenticate this request. Okay. I have just approved and this is the client secret. Okay. So this client secret, you should copy and note it down somewhere because this is the only time you will be able to see it. You will not be able to see it again. You can generate another one, but this one will not be visible again. If I reload the page, you will see that now we will not be able to see the client secret. We only see the last three or four these digits, right? For, uh, <coughs> for logo, you can add some image. Can you give a quick glance about this step of creating OAuth? I was disconnected due to some internet issue. Uh, can you check the recording later? I mean, there, these are very straightforward steps. So you can go to developer settings and go to OAuth and then click on new OAuth app and then enter all these options. These are the two important options that you have to give. Okay. And this is the URL where your user will be redirected after the user gives the permission. Okay. So we are using this one. And you see, this is the callback URL. So I'm updating this application. Okay. With this, we are done. <coughs> so how do we initiate a uh, GitHub login, right? So going to OAuth documentation to show you all the steps necessary. Currently, we have uh, completed these two steps. Now the next step is to, on our front end, we have to show the user the button to sign in with GitHub. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm uh, going to just create a dummy front end for this. And in this, I will add some static files. Okay. So I'm going to say GitHub sign in and This is our, uh, this is going to be our home page from where we will initiate the GitHub sign. -in. And how we initiate GitHub sign, -in? we have to send the user to this URL request a user's GitHub identity. Okay. For this, uh, we need client ID. Okay. This is the only thing that is required. 
So we need to give a client ID and this client ID is passed in uh, query params like this. So here we need to send the client ID. So this client ID is can be stored on front end. That's not a problem. We can store this on front end. And so after that, user will be landed on after we uh, after the user allows, right? So I'm going to show you that if I click on this, then you will see something like this. Okay. This is called the consent screen where the user will give the permission that, okay, this app wants to request my identity, which is fine. And it is requesting for public data only. And I will authorize. So it is saying authorizing, uh, authorizing will redirect the user to this screen, this, this, this website. Okay. How to get the URL? We, we just created the URL. This is from documentation. Let me add here. Okay. Uh, after this, you have to add your application's client ID, right? App each application that you register with GitHub will have client ID and client secret. You can use this client ID to tell uh, which application. So this client ID is actually telling which application is requesting the user's identity. Okay. Without this, GitHub will not know which application is uh, requesting. So this has to be added in the uh, in the URL. If I don't do this, then you will see some error like this 404. Okay. So this is important. And this is called the consent screen. So with this consent screen, user will give the permission that, okay, this app wants to see my identity. I allow. If I click on this, right? If I click on authorize, you will see that user will be taken to uh, this URL. User will be taken to the this URL. So callback URL <coughs> and some code is also attached here. This is the callback URL we passed, right? And you can see some code is also attached here. That means now our uh, front end application has to handle that okay we have we have gotten a code from github now how to get the uh, users identity users detail using this code okay are we are you are you are we clear till this point and this code is available only for 10 minutes okay this code is available only for valid for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, it will expire for the security purpose. So with this code, how do we get the user's identity? So to understand that, let's go and see the second step of the documentation. It says exchange the code for an access token. So I'm going to use, I'm going to make a request to this post endpoint with Thunder client to get the access token, okay? <coughs> In this, we have to pass the client ID. It takes following input parameters, okay? Input parameters are added uh, like this. In the query parameters only, okay? So we are going to say client ID and this is the client ID we have. And it also requires client secret. So if client secret is required, that means uh, we, we have to do this from backend because we don't want to store client secret on front end. Okay, otherwise our application will not be secure and anybody, any, dev, any other developer will be able to see that, okay, this is the client ID, client secret for this application and they can uh, uh, they can also use these in their code. So we don't want to share this. That's why this, this step that we are going to do is supposed to be done only from backend so that our client secret is never revealed. Okay. So after this, uh, the, the, uh, the front end will send this code to backend, the code that we have just received. This code, front end will send this code to the backend 
and backend will send this API call to GitHub to fetch the to exchange uh, this code for access token. Okay. Third thing that is also required is the code. So this is the code. And uh, redirect URI is uh, not required, so we will not send this. If I send a call to this, you will see. Uh, okay, it is sending a request. It is slow for some reason. Okay, so it is taking some time. Not sure why. Mm. Okay, let me cancel this. So send this again. Okay, so it responded with 200 and this is the response we got, right? Access token. And this is the string. We can also <clears throat> uh, add this uh, header, accept header. So in accept, we can also change the value to application JSON. And we will get the response as a JSON response. But if I try this again, this code is used once and it cannot be used again. It is only usable only once. Okay. So if we send this, we will get an error saying that the code passed is incorrect or expired. Okay. So we can request another token. That's that's not a problem. So So if we send the request again, it will send the user back to our uh, callback URL with a new code, new code every time. So we can exchange this new code for, for an access token. Okay. <clears throat> so this time we get this access token and this access token is, uh, is the token that will give us user identity. Okay, so we have to make a get request to this API. Right, this is the third step. That is after getting the code. This is the third step. And inside this, we have to pass the header authorization bearer author token like this that we in the auth use bearer and pass this this access token right pass this access token and make a call to this api with this api you can get the user identity so i'm going to show you my github identity is going to be sent in the response so you can see login umakant v this is the github id and avatar url url my users profile url and all these things right so my bio, my name, my email is null because I have made it private. If I had made my email public, then it would it would also be show uh, shared user. So, okay, with this, these are the steps. Uh, you can see that we need to use client ID and client secret to get the use uh, to get. Uh, access token after access token we don't need to use client id or client secret we only make a call to the api.github.com slash user with the bearer token the token that we receive here and we get the user details okay after these user details are received on the back end we can say whether the user is uh, already present in the database if not present then we can uh, add this in the database okay and after that 
we can uh, generate a new auth token which is uh, which will be used in a subsequent api request okay does that make sense so we are going to code all of this the whole flow if you have any doubts regarding in regarding the flow let me know right now <coughs> any questions Any questions, folks? So I'm adding these uh, variables. So I have added these variables in the env file so that I can use these. And after that, I'm going to create a route. Okay, I'm going to create a route in the auth router. Say uh, get. <coughs> I'm going to say GitHub uh, sign in with GitHub. Okay, we can use camel case as well. And we are going to expect a code that front end will pass us, right? After this, what do we do? We exchange this code for an access token. Okay. Then with access token, we get the user details check if the details are already present in the db and then we generate and generate a jwt auth token are you uh, getting this flow? Any questions at this point? Let me know. Otherwise, uh, you will not be able to understand how OAuth is working. Okay. Cool. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm going to get the code from request dot params, right? This is going to be a string from here. And I'm going to make this asynchronous. Yes, it is. It is a little bit complicated. Just try to follow along. If you don't understand any or any part of it ask questions okay why we are doing do, do you first of all do you understand the steps these steps okay uh, request dot params dot code is same as uh, destructuring this object so i can i can even say like this same thing okay so I'm going to make an API call from backend to the GitHub server to exchange this code, right? To exchange this code for an access token. So this API call we are going to make. <coughs> Is my screen fluctuating for all of you? Okay, I think a lot of people are facing this challenge.
okay uh, let me try to fix it it is fine for some not fine for others let's see let me know if it fluctuates okay so <clears throat> we are going to make an api call for that i'm going to install axios in this application we do not have axios right now so i'm going to say npm install axios So, okay, this one we are going to uh, send. So this is the URL and this is the client ID. I'm actually going to copy the whole thing and then we can replace. Right, so this URL, uh, this client ID, I'm going to replace with uh, github client id this client secret i'm going to replace with uh, github client secret and this code i'm going to replace with the code that we have just received here okay <coughs> so we how do we replace with client id i'm going to go to config folder and add these two uh, uh, to config variables in the index file. Okay, so config dot github client ID and config dot github client secret. This will prepare the whole URL and this has to be a post request so i'm going to say axios let's import axios let's make the call so i will say uh, <clears throat> axios dot uh, post should work okay so if i make the request to url this should give me the response and i will show the response here We also have to send uh, this accept header so that we get the response in response as application JSON. Okay. So <clears throat> I think this should work just fine and we'll test this okay we will test this and let's also after this let's also see that in the response we are getting access token so response dot data will have access token like this with this access token we will make another request. So I'm going to make a request to, we need to make a request to this. And let you, uh, GitHub user details equals to, Axios dot get and we will say URL and we can say in headers we can pass authorization as bearer and 
the value is going to be XS token. Okay. If we user detail response, yeah, it should be URL too. Thanks. So <clears throat> I'm going to just log and log the user details and send it in the response for now so that we can test whether it is working fine or not working fine. Okay. So let's uh, check all this flow for now. So I'm going to make a request to auth sign in with GitHub with this code. Okay. So I'm going to request a new code and I will check whether it is working fine or not working fine. And <clears throat> this is going to be a get request. So I'm requesting for a new, new code. So I got this new code. Let me run the server. And here we will just add this code and see what response we get. So I think it is calling GitHub API, taking some time and it says something went wrong. Okay. So if we look at the error, it says that, uh, there must be something wrong with the API. That's why it has failed. So request failed with the status code 401, right? Uh, okay, I think. <coughs> mm, something went wrong. We are getting this token. Oh. Hmm. Let me check why it is showing error. Uh, this log is, I think, coming from here. Can we show the? Let's. request again let's request a new token again just so that we can check okay so we will open this again and this will redirect the user uh, to our callback url okay so we don't have to give permission again and again. User will give only one permission at a time. So after uh, for some time, that permission is sufficient and user will be redirected without any consent screen. Okay. So let's see what log do we get. So we get this access token but this access this so this request is working just fine but it is not giving us a response in the uh, json format so uh, something is wrong with this let me check the documentation maybe uh, maybe this this header is not how it is supposed to be sent Okay, so I'm going to use this one. <clears throat> Axios dot get, uh, Axios dot get headers. Let me see if I should use a small a.
get a try with a new code. Okay. So this is the new code. We will send the request again. Okay, we are still getting the response like this. We are not getting uh, we are not getting in JSON format. That is weird. Mm. Let me check for no, no, it should not be wrapped in a constant. This, this should be fine. Actually, there is a I know an approach, so we can use that approach. <clears throat> we can say export the code for Node.js. Is it available? Axios like this. So options, URL, header. <laughs> yeah. Mm, let's try with No, no, content type. Uh, okay, let's check with content type because we are not sending content type header here, so that's why it does not matter. Config headers, header one, value one, data URL. We send it like this. So, URL data and okay second parameter for post request is data that that's a problem we should not send data config is the third option so where is our code this is not data data we are sending as null okay this should be fine and let's change this to accept We'll try again with a new code. Right. <coughs> and so requesting a new code. This will send the user back to our fallback URL with the code. So we will use this code, send the request. Okay. So this time we get the access token and this is an object now, JSON object. And second request is being made, I think. And we get the user data. Okay. So this is the user data we get. So this user data is fine. So, Okay, I think it should be data. Right, so <clears throat> so what do we need from this? We need, my screen is lagging sometimes. Okay, hold on.
okay so inside this data we need uh, this one github login we need avatar url we can also check if email is present and <clears throat> we can also have a name we need name and i think that's it we don't we, we can uh, we don't need anything else so we will just create the user with these details okay so before we can before we can add this let's modify our uh, user a little bit so this instead of email we will have uh, i'm going to add an option saying sign sign in method and it's going to be a string it can be email password okay or it can be github so there are two sign in method that we are allowing so i'm going to say type and the default value i'm going to say is email password so in in the case of uh, github sign in the uh, the password is not allowed email is not sorry the password and email they they can be empty and in, uh, gender also we are not getting so gender can also be empty right so in this time, uh, in this time, we can uh, call this controller. <coughs> function. Uh, sign in with GitHub. And we will pass the user details here. And here, we will pass all these user details. Let's export on export this function from controllers. And we will pass all of this name, email, avatar URL, and login. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> this will give us a this will give us user details as well as the auth token. And we will pass that in the data. Okay, just like here. Just like login, we will pass whatever data we are getting, we will pass. So, in message, we will say login with GitHub. I'm going a little slow so that you can follow easily. Okay. <coughs> so we will pass data like this, user and token. So first we, we check where, whatever details we are getting. We are getting, uh, we are getting name, avatar url and login login is the uh, github username okay so let for storing github username instead of email we will say github username so so that we can uniquely identify a user okay so Let's check if user already exists. Find one. We say GitHub username. Okay, if the user does not exist, 
let's create the user okay so we say <coughs> sign in method we say github also add this option here to filter and github username is this one are you able to follow what i'm doing if the user is not present in the database so when would that be the first time the user signs in using github right that time user won't be present in our db so we have to add the user to the db okay name and email and image we can use avatar url <coughs> so with this user will be added to our uh to our database okay so we will uh change the user to json object we will delete the password property and we will generate the token and we will return okay so this is how we can handle github with sign in now if the user is not present then are uh, then are we redirecting them to github sign up page or creating them no no we uh, I'm saying we will get the user's details with this code. We will get the user detail, right? So if both these APIs are successful, then we will get the user detail. Then <clears throat> these details are present on GitHub uh, platform, but they may not be present in our database. If this is the first time that user comes to our application with GitHub, this may be the first time. Okay. So this is where we are getting the access details this we are doing in the sign in with github code we are generating a token and we are sending the data okay so <clears throat> so what is going to happen i'm going to show you uh, i'm going to open a terminal what just happened I'm going to open a terminal and log into Mongo SH. We are using this database. Uh, wrong connection URL. We are using this blogs example database. So db dot users dot find right where. Uh, GitHub username is Umakantri, like this. So currently there is no uh, such user, but let's say if I open, <coughs> if I open this and try to sign in with this code, right? I'll go. I'm going to make a request. I'm going to make a request uh sign in with github to this url so you will see that okay server is not running so we get the user detail uh okay it says cannot read properties of null to user hmm something wrong here Okay, I never use this, but this must have been created in the database. So if you see this sign in method, GitHub, GitHub username, get, uh, this one name is this email is null image is this one. So if I show you, <coughs> this is my GitHub profile. 
So that means user is getting added to the database. Okay. So also we are returning, we will be returning a token. Let me show you. This time, I, if I use this, then we will say we will get something went wrong because this is already uh, already used. But let us request a new code. Okay, so this one is a new code. I can get this, and here we will get the user details like this. Okay, that means. Uh, <clears throat> we, everything is going just fine and we are getting this token now this token can be stored on front end just like uh, what we were getting from the login similarly we are getting with login with github okay so the process is same the result is same and afterwards uh, calling the apis is also going to be same okay so if i call this api say if i make a post request and with this token with this new token and i'm going to say uh post added by github user using token received from github sign in right token uh, actually the token we are creating ourselves we are not using the token by github but we are creating the token ourselves so that uh the process can remain same for all all type of authentication flows okay so okay so When I make this request, you will see that user ID is this one and Gravatar, uh, this image is the avatar from GitHub. Okay. So that means it is working same, just like uh, we were earlier using the token that we received from email password sign-in. This time the token we receive is from GitHub sign-in. Okay. So the process, further process remains same. The only difference is that here, instead of, uh, checking the email and password we are checking the github token and fetching the identity from uh, github right we are not the owner of the user identity here right does that make sense <clears throat> okay we can remove these logs Cool. So this is how uh, OAuth works and the OAuth remains, uh, the OAuth process remains similar for other types of identity providers, Twitter, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, all of these follow the same procedure, right? Only uh, on in GitHub, there are these two steps, but these two, uh, for G Google also and for other identity providers, the number of API calls that you will have to make from your backend may vary depending on the platform you use okay so <clears throat> with this we can make start building a very simple front-end application for now i'm going to use uh, uh, native html and javascript so i'm going to create a new folder for this github sign-in page so inside this i'm going to add index dot html and here say sign in with github okay i'm going to just add app.js okay 
<clears throat> and if I run the server now, and if I open this, okay. Uh, server is running or not? Mm, I think we are not using express static folder, uh, static yet. So, So this time it is making a request to GitHub sign in. Okay. <clears throat> I think it should be slash JS slash. So this time we are getting hello in browser. So first task is to read this code. Okay. Then we will make the API call to backend. So in our app.js, we will say select code is window dot location right dot if i show you here window dot location window dot location has all these things so this this part is the one which is carrying our code okay so how we get this code is new url search param And we pass window dot location dot search. Okay. Dot code. Uh, so <clears throat> params dot get code. And I'm going to just show you that this is our code and if i reload then you will see that this is we are getting the code right whatever code we are getting so this code is visible there <coughs> if the code is present then we can make uh, get user right sign in with get out so we can call this api and this will give us the user right so here we will make a call we will make a fetch call and we will call this route that we have just defined slash auth slash this one okay slash auth slash this with the code this is a get request so it should work and let we will say response equals to await response dot json and <clears throat> we can log the uh, response there okay so if everything goes well then see i'm making the request but this request is failing with internal server error and the response we are getting is something went wrong because this code is autom already used so if i don't do this if i just make this and if I click on, at this point, we are serving uh, this page. If I click on this and uh, user will send us, uh, the GitHub will send us the user to uh, this page. And here we are getting a uh, code and this is making a network call. And inside network call, you're seeing message, login with GitHub successful. And we are getting all of this data, okay? So, <coughs> Sorry. 
so we can easily say that uh, we can add a try catch block here right Otherwise, we will get the data, okay? We will get the data. Inside response.data, there is user property. And here you can uh, say document user uh, div is i'm just creating a document sorry creating a dom element create element div inside that div i'm just saying div dot inner html is this okay img src like this okay user dot image so if i try again we will have to say do body document dot append child user dev okay so if i log in again with github you will see that after everything is successful okay um it has to be document dot body okay again i, I uh, after uh, after some time github will again ask for uh, consent if i give the consent then you will see that uh this is user user has logged in and front end had re has received the token and the user detail so front end can store this in uh, uh local storage and send this in all subsequent request okay so this is how you can sign in with github on OAuth. so we are going to build the complete flow uh we are going to build the complete flow with react as well right now i'm just showing you uh, how to temporarily with a temporary ui but um, this is still shows that how github sign in is working okay <coughs> any questions Anybody has any questions? Do backend engineers always have to work with Postman or Thunder Client? Uh, at least uh, you you need some tool to test your APIs. So <coughs> uh, sending request from browser, especially post request, delete request, get request can always be sent here, but not always. So uh sometimes it is helpful to use tools like postman and thunder client they are convenient it's not like we have to we want some convenience that's why we use those tools okay any other question No. Uh, how many of you have understood this flow? GitHub OAuth flow?
ओके ओनली वन पर्सन टू पीपल एक्चुअली यस डेफिनेटली यू विल हैव टू यू विल हैव टू गो थ्रू दिस टोकन पार्ट इज स्टिल अनकलियर विच पार्ट दिस लास्ट पार्ट ओके डू यू मीन दिस पार्ट साइन इन विद गिटअप ओके सो थिंक अबाउट इट लाइक दिस वी आर ओनली यूजिंग गिट हब टू रिप्लेस रजिस्टर एंड लॉग इन रेस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स आर स्टिल गोइंग टू वर्क द सेम राइट वर्क द सेम वे दे वर अर्लियर वर्किंग so we still need a secret token that is created by our server we cannot use the secret token that is created by github for uh, getting logged in user for getting for making uh, a request to add a post to like or to add comment we still need a secret token that uh, this middleware that this middleware can identify right make sense so the token that is stored on front end should be generated by our server okay that is why we are creating that token we are uh, we are getting one token from github but that token is to fetch the user details from github servers and it doesn't have to do anything re, re, uh, it doesn't add any value to our server other than uh it is allowing us to fetch the value of user details from the github servers right <clears throat> does it make sense the only purpose of github here is to give us the user identity because we know any person any user coming from github is already a verified user and they don't have to remember the password and email okay yes with github token we get the user details from the github server because without the github token it will not be possible right but then we generate our own token so that uh, rest of the subsequent apis can work the same way they were working earlier we don't want to change anything any other part of our application just for github we just want to replace a uh, register and login part of our apis so that user can sign in conveniently that's it yeah any other questions anybody can we make a way to check if token has expired or not yes uh, you can so whatever response you are getting here uh, in this this is the part where the token can be expired so whatever the response you are getting here you can check whether the response you are getting is not uh, correct or not okay so it can respond in one of three or four ways right this response can be of uh, can be of whether successful type or unsuccessful type so you can check whether it has access token or not so you can say if access token is not present then you can throw an error saying access code may be expired okay but since this access code this code that we are getting is actually directly sent from front end to back end so here from our github sign in route we are not waiting to send uh, to exchange the token we are directly sending right so this should not be a problem but still you can check like this okay any other questions so let's take a uh, 5 minutes break and then we will continue we are done with login uh, we are done with uh, oauth okay after this i'm going to explain to you um another type of another type of authentication which is server uh, session based authentication 
although we have learned JWT, which is much more uh, preferred than session based, but still we need to understand uh, session based storage where uh, <clears throat> instead of storing token, we store some uh, useful information about the logged in user on the server side. So we will talk about that. Uh, till then, take five minutes break and come back after that and we'll talk about session based storage. Okay. Yeah, we can learn about cookies as well. We will learn about cookies. Okay, which part of the screen do you want me to leave with? Actually, I can just commit the code so you can browse on GitHub as well. Okay. I just committed. So see you after five minutes break then. Okay. Uh, are you guys back? Cool. So, uh, I'm going to write, create this as miscellaneous, right? So we're going to learn about how session uh, based authentication is done. <clears throat> First, we will talk about what a session is and how it works, right? For that, we will start with a dummy app. And I'm going to install Express and Express Session. This library uh, is Express Session for managing user session on the server. Okay. So we will create a simple basic express app. Okay, there is a question. Sometimes a session ends as soon as I leave the window. Some end when I am on their page, but the time has elapsed. Yes, uh, we'll talk about that. <clears throat> okay, so I'm creating. Okay. <coughs> so running this. This is working. When I open this, it says hello user. Okay. So at this point, we don't know anything about user, right? Suppose user uh, logs in and this time I'm going to say login and they're going to give us some name and I'm not going, I'm not building the whole uh, email password authentication database thing. I'm just saying we will get the username, right? This is suppose this is successful login. Make sense? So how do we uh, how do we remember that okay the user on this device has logged in? <coughs> Either we can create a token and send it. The first option is the first method that we learned is that 
okay create a token which is unique to the logged in user a token which is safe to send to front end can be decoded on front end and back end both anywhere but we will we will be able to verify the authenticity using the token and th those tokens can only be prepared created by server but this time we say okay let's say there is some email password right there is some email password we verify and we understand that this is the user <clears throat> instead of storing the user related information on the on the front end with the token we store the details on the back end so coming to the diagram this is the diagram on the client side user uh, logs in user will send the login request okay and on the server side we will store information about the user so how will we uh, map that which user are we storing the information for so we will use some kind of random uh, randomized token random id or random string random bunch of string to identify that okay for a uh, user on this device user in this browser okay user in user in this browser has uh, this state this is the state 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 can be any variable so user can be logged in user can be not logged in so like this so user can have this state okay does this make sense for each device for each browser we will create a session so session is the temporary uh, temporary storage for each user which is logged in or which is using our application not even logged in which is using our application so for example if people have opened our application on let's say 5000 devices we will store uh, some data for we will manage uh, or maintain some data for 5000 users on the server side and it will be stored in a map so using some id or some uh, identifier let's say random uuid or something it will uh, store that data so front end will uh, uh, we can identify this uh, identifier from the front end okay does that make sense the main part is we will store this all of this data for this user for uh, some user who is using our application on their device we will uh, store some data okay does that make sense cool so we are going to do this uh, i'm going to show you for let's say uh, login is going to be a little bit tricky example now for now i'm just going to say how do we store uh, details <coughs> so let's say just to give you an example <coughs> how session is stored first let's say uh, every time user um, lands on this application we are going to increase visit plus plus okay so we are going to say some paragraph okay so if i open this you see that every time i restart uh, i reload this this visit counter is incremented okay and if i open this in let's say another browser if i open this in another browser you can see that this is this data is common for both the users this data is common for both the users so if i reload this now it has been incremented to 19 and if i reload here 
then I will get 20. So how do we segregate this data? This global data is going to be, uh, <coughs> this, this global variable is going to be common for both the users. So how do we create a different, uh, how do we store different data for different users? Okay. No, no, visit will not increment for any other endpoint other than this. It is only incremented here. Okay. But you understand the problem, right? How do we maintain uh, different uh, pieces of data for different user? When we load the page from a new browser, that is uh, the visit should, ha should have started from zero. That's the exact problem we are trying to solve for on. So this variable is a global variable, right? This does not, uh, when the server is running, see when the server is running, it is uh, having only one variable in memory. For no matter who is the user, it, this variable is on the server side. This is not executed on the client side. This is on the server side. So only one program has this variable. That's why we are reading this from this and we are getting this uh, value incremented. Every time we reload, this value gets incremented. So first problem is how to, how to manage different uh, data for different clients. This is where this library called express session comes to help us, right? <coughs> And what it does is, uh, it will store different pieces of data for different users, okay? So this will do exactly what we want to do here. It will have uh, different data for this user and it will have different data for this user. So I'm just going to implement this and show you. So I'm going to say, uh, going to this let me open <clears throat> this page so we import this and we use it like this app dot use and we pass some options here okay so we use it as a middleware you can see app.use and we are passing some function. We are executing some function. It is returning a middleware and this is implemented as a middleware. Okay. So it, it expects some param, uh, some values. So one value it expects is secret. So this secret is like, uh, it is used. I'll tell you where it is used. It is uh, used to create, to generate the secret cookie. Okay. It is used to generate a token. So we can give it anything. We can give a random value that is difficult to guess. Resave false and save uninitialized. These are the default params. So you can read more about these params here, what these are doing. Okay. So <clears throat> there must be something here in the documentation. So resave. You can read about the what what can we control with resave and other things, right? These are the default params that we are going to use. But uh, in cookie, we can pass, we can pass the cookie options and secure we have to give false. Because we are not using HTTPS, secure cookies will not work for us. So we have to just work with unsecure cookies. And you can also pass max age, okay? And this max age is a uh, number in milliseconds. So after how, uh, after how long you want the session to be reset for a user. Okay. So for example, if the user does not uh, refresh or uh, if the user does not refresh, then this will be uh, uh, reset to uh, the this will be reset to an empty object, sort of, okay? So for now, we'll, let's just not give this maximum age. But with this, what we can do is, 
this uh, this this middleware is going to update request object okay uh, this middleware will inject session object in the request object just like uh, we injected request dot user similarly we will get request dot session okay so with this middleware this uh, request object will be loaded with request dot session and we can use this okay and this will be segregated for each user so i'm just going to show you how it is going to work so we say if request dot session dot visit is present then we say <coughs> visit is request dot session dot visit otherwise we can set the visit to one okay in the session object we update the visit so like this okay this this property we are controlling for each user it will be now a different number because this whole object is different so for each user this visit counter is going to be completely different okay so i'll show you <clears throat> so if i reload okay i ha we have to update this as well right so so we have to update this as well a re visit plus plus so this time it is getting updated okay if i open this uh, in another uh, browser so you will see that for this browser it is one two three four updating like this and here it is updating like this so for this browser it is still at eight and this is at 19 20 and this is still at 9 10. so that means this visit variable in the session is maintained for different users right different uh clients does that make sense so this request session is going to be uh, this object for the user who is making the request okay you always get this uh, object if the you if this is this this browser safari browser is the browser which is making this request then you will always get this object in the request dot session if there is some other user making the request then you will get that user session okay so this library is doing all of the uh, heavy lifting for you and you just have to interact with request dot session object and whatever you change there whatever you change here it will be automatically updated okay so for example if the user if the user on this browser logs in then you can say request dot session dot logged in is true and request dot session dot user is say this name okay so here you can say request dot session dot user okay so <clears throat> right now i have not called this url okay uh, here instead of calling user i'm just going to say logged in successfully and here i'm going to say request dot session dot user okay if the user is present otherwise i'm going to say hello user like this so i am right now getting hello user okay but if i call say uh, login with my name then it will say logged in successfully 
and if i go to home page then you will see i am getting hello umakant okay but if i go here i'm still getting hello user okay does that make sense uh on login we can change the session object for this user and we can add the logged in user details and we can see the user logged in user details in any other endpoint as well how is this working are you asking how is this working internally okay so <clears throat> this library is managing this library is managing all these uh, date all these objects for each client okay all these objects for each client and whenever we update this object it is also updated globally for this client right it is not stored on the front end it is stored on the back end so for example if i close this app and restart you will see here i was a logged in user but if i reload everything will reset that means the data that was stored as session object is gone now right but if i say login as let's say this user umakant or say vishal then it says logged in successfully because that is the response and it is updated the request session object okay the request session object is updated with the logged in user name whatever name we provide and this lo uh, logged in session user we can use in any other endpoint as well okay so if i go to home page i get vishal what's the visit count at that moment which moment initially it will it will start with one so if everything goes away everything goes away the visit count is only incremented here okay so it is only going to be uh, zero uh, it is only going to be undefined so when we uh, when we visit this first time okay so let me show you i have just restarted the server and if i reload this is starts with one okay this is starts with one so request dot session dot visit is one but if i go to slash login slash vishal the visit counter is still one because we have not updated visit counter anywhere in this endpoint it is still one for this session but once we update uh, once we reach here it will be uh, one okay it will be uh, one so if i go to home page you will see uh, it is two so um okay no no it is it is going to be updated uh okay i think this should be one but you will get the point if you follow the steps so this is reloaded if i load this user one and the counter is still one and if i log in vishal the counter still should be one okay then we will read from here and okay i'll have to do this again login vishal and if i go to home page then i will read from here it should be one let me check okay the first time we visited that's how that's where it was incremented to two yeah uh, the first time we visited we read one but we incremented to two so it should be two this time and now we have just incremented it to three right we are showing two but in our session we have incremented it to three so that next time we uh, show three so <clears throat> internally what is happening is that uh, i will remove everything 
so for example i will remove the cookies i will remove everything remove cookies and everything if i reload i am reset back to where we started okay so you will see that uh, i will again remove these okay so once i reload you will see uh, in the application currently if i go to cookies then i have no cookies okay i have no cookies i have made no network request this is from the beginning but if i reload in the network request i get the response but i also get a few more things in the response headers these are the response headers we have this set cookie header which is saying uh, set the value of the cookie set the cookies to this okay so these cookies are separated by semicolon and front uh, server is sending this header server means uh, this uh, this middleware is setting the value of this header in the response saying whenever the response is uh, received by the browser the browser should set this value as the cookie and earlier i showed you the cookie was empty but this time you will see that there is a cookie placed with the connect ss connect.sid and it has this random uh, junk value right junk not junk value but it is I, some identifier and this identifier is uh, this cookie is sent in all the request we make right and all the further requests that we make if i make this request i will show you that uh, in the request header this cookie is sent because of which uh, this library is able to identify okay which user is actually the user for which we have to update the session data and we have to read the session data okay so because of set header right now we are not getting any set header because the header is already set but the first time when we remove everything when we remove everything and if i reload we get this set header okay and this will uh, set the cookie value and this will now become the identification between front end and back end so front end will send this value in the cookie uh, in the request header as a cookie and back end will identify okay this is the client that we have to uh, check the session value for does that make sense so this even if this cookie uh, is not present backend will set the cookie on front with some uh, unique identifier for that session storage make sense so i i showed you this uh, this id right sort of this uh, random id so this is that uh, id which is um, set by the backend and is used to identify the session storage clear now comparing the two options that we have we have a jwt token option and we have session based storage option this session uh, jwt token storage uh, jwt token approach is called stateless because it is not maintaining any state as such for the user on the server side for the client it is not maintaining any such data right but session based storage session based approach is maintaining some storage right whether it is on uh, in memory and if we restart the server this goes away session based storage goes away or it can be based on something else as well right it can be persistent storage or it can be in memory storage but we still have to maintain some uh, some state for the user so this becomes cumbersome to manage and this is a much more cleaner approach and we always prefer this one but sometimes you may see a uh, session based store uh, approach as well for authentication and such but always try to use these this, this one in your project because it is cleaner and it is safer as well okay
but i hope you understand the you you understand the approach basically the server is managing some uh, state for the client for every client that is currently active on the platform clear and if i restart the server that uh, session if it is stored in inside memory which means in ram that goes away although there are solutions to use uh, using some other persistent storage for debit card payment page session based auth is applied uh, i don't think debit card uses auth uh, as such but it may be using some different uh, some session data which is not related to auth but related to uh, something um, right like uh, it can be storing details like what was the uh, card number or what was the pin number for this client and what which uh, which payment id is it paying for and so on isn't ip address a better identifier for user no no uh, because ip address can change if i if i am logged into my phone right and if i am connected to my home wifi that will have a different ip address and if i take my phone to my university or to my workplace and if i connect to that wifi the ip address will change because it is the network ip it it is the network which is having ip address not the device okay that's why ip address is not an a good identifier clear so <clears throat> does the session based uh session based authentication make sense i i hope you have some idea you don't have to uh implement this yourself but the difference between uh, jwt tokens and session based authentication is that session based is stateful where you have to maintain some state for the client but uh, jwt token is stateless in that we create the token and then we forget which all tokens we have created because we have some way to verify all the tokens whether we have created those tokens or not created so we forget all the tokens that we created but we will once we once we see the tokens we will verify the tokens right <coughs> you can add these are your own fields these are not defined by session these uh, session dot visit session dot user session dot logged in these are our own field this is how we can add any property so your own property where you want to let's say uh, store something like user is blogged or something like that you can create anything like this okay you can add any property you want cool so this was all about sessions although we are not going too much uh, we are not preferring this to to be used in our uh, application but still you should have some idea so in the next session uh, in the next lecture we are going to talk about uh, this library which is used for uh, authentication but it uses a uh, session based detail uh, session based approach that's why i i had to explain session to you how do we get an information what browser and device user has logged in from like we see google accounts uh yes there there will be, uh, actually in all the apis in all the apis you call you send some details like uh, in the request headers you will see that this is the header that is sent by chrome okay so this is the browser 
and this is google chrome and you can also get a uh, navigator dot navigation you can also get some details about the client device okay not sure how to get that but you can also get the details in client device and add a request header in all your request saying that okay so this is the this is the device detail that you were looking for user agent and this is the browser detail okay all the requests will have this kind of header okay then uh cool so uh in the next class we are going to talk about passport js you can also read about it if you want so passport js let me open the official documentation Passport JS is a third party uh, library that we will use and it has multiple modules in which we can easily add different different types of authentication flows. Okay, so Google, Facebook, GitHub, anything, it, it has a it has a built in module for that or you, you, these are called strategies as well. So if you want to use Facebook, then you can install this library. And these are plugins, sort of like plugins. So we'll talk, we'll talk about how to use one of these plugins. And this will use a session-based approach. So I will show you how to use this. And then we can start working on our PSC. Okay. Will we learn about OAuth 2? No, no. Oh, the, the thing that we used is OAuth 2 only, I think, uh, but OAuth 2 and o, whatever is latest, we have just implemented that OAuth 2. I don't think it is, uh, we are not, we are not going to cover that. Okay. <clears throat> and I don't think there are many a huge difference between OAuth and OAuth 2. Anyway, I'll see you folks in the next lecture then. All right. Okay, bye.